This is a bottomless porter filter, and it is exactly what it sounds like. Compared to traditional double spouted porter filters that usually come with espresso machines, this porter filter is, well, it's bottomless. It's essentially got the spouts cut right off from the bottom and it's naked. Some people call it a naked porter filter. For you coffee nerds out there, you might already have one, or you maybe already looked past it. But for you guys who are just starting out in espresso or maybe own your first espresso machine, you might have come across one of these in coffee videos or maybe even consider getting one for yourself. But what's the hype on these? Why is everyone recommending to use a bottomless porter filter? And do you really need to add one of these to your coffee arsenal? This was actually my first accessory I wanted to get after I upgraded from my Breville Barista Pro to a Rocket Espresso machine. The main reason why I wanted to get it was because the coffee just looks so damn good coming out of one of these. If you've watched any video of espresso being pulled out of one of these, you could definitely agree that it just looks so good. That shot just looks so damn sexy. Everything is just so mesmerizing, it's so aesthetically pleasing. The flow of espresso coming out and all the different colors and everything just dripping like honey. It's just so nice to watch. And really, who wouldn't want to look at this every day while you're making coffee? But I'm here to tell you a little bit more about bottomless porter filters. It's not all about looks. There's actually a couple more advantages of owning one of these that I wanted to go through. So besides watching your beautiful espresso being extracted, the first advantage is that you can actually tell how well you've prepared your coffee beforehand. You can see how evenly the espresso is extracting. Having the bottom open like this basically unmasks all the mistakes that you made while preparing the coffee bed and accentuates everything. If this had spouts, it would basically cover up any mistakes that you've made and you wouldn't really be able to visually tell if there's a mistake until you actually sip your espresso or you watch it come out of the spouts. Things like channeling and uneven extraction is basically visible with this bottom cut open. So having a bottomless porter filter like this will actually help you identify the mistakes you make while preparing the coffee and it will help you improve on your coffee preparation, your technique, and your overall extracting abilities. A bottomless porter filter is also very easy to clean. There are no spouts, so you could wipe the bottom of the basket, wash the top, and there's just less hard to clean areas where coffee can stick onto, dry onto, and basically leave more impurities for your next cup of espresso. The basket is also very easy to take off. All you have to do is just push from the bottom and it'll just pop right off. Compared to a double spouted porter filter, you can't access the basket from the bottom. You actually have to use something sharp, like a, a knife or something like that, to actually pry the basket out. So this makes it harder if you're trying to switch in between different types of porter filters, between baskets, and having a bottomless porter filter is just very easy to make those switches. I'm also using a VST basket. This one in particular is 18 grams and it's ridgeless. So without the ridge on the wall, it actually makes it much more easier to remove. The spring doesn't lock onto it and it's easy to pop out. Other than making a little bit of a noise when you're knocking out your puck, this ridgeless basket has stayed in place. It hasn't really fallen out. And I feel like I get a better extraction because the wall is straight. There's no ridge on it, which might affect the flow of water as it travels through the coffee bed. Without the bottom, you're also able to fit larger basket sizes into this porter filter. So typically you would do like a double shot basket, which is up to maybe 18 grams. But for you crazy people who wanna do triple shots, like a 21 gram dose, you're able to do that with a bottomless porter filter because there is no bottom that's actually constraining the depth of your basket. So if you like big doses and you wanna use bigger baskets, you can do that with a bottomless porter filter. Now, another main reason why I got a bottomless porter filter is because it provides more cup clearance. With my Rocket Espresso machine, there's not actually a lot of room to squeeze in tall cups, especially when you're using a scale. So having a bottomless porter filter will actually give you back almost two inches more of cup clearance. So you could actually use taller cups and a scale at the same time. Because there are no spouts, the bottom is flat, and that means you're able to put the bottomless porter filter flat onto the countertop or a tamping mat, and it makes it so much more easier to prepare your coffee bed, tamp it, level it off, do your WDT, and every other extra thing that you need to do to your coffee while you're preparing it. Because the bottom is flat, it's much more stable, and you're able to do everything you need to do to prepare your coffee bed without worrying that it's gonna wobble. Because there's no spouts on it, this is actually a lot lighter than your typical double spouted porter filters. 
For some people, I know you guys want heavier things. You want something with some mass. Don't get me wrong, this is still pretty heavy, but having the spouts off of it is almost like half the weight is gone. <laughs> so it's easier to move around. You're able to put in your grinder much easier. There's nothing really weighing it down. It's just something to note about one of these. Maybe you're working in a cafe and your forearms get sore because you're using double spouted port filters all day. While you could actually switch to a bottomless porter filter and feel this huge weight lifted off your shoulders and saving your forearms for something else. And lastly, from my experience, bottomless porter filters actually do create a slightly more thicker and richer crema. Look-wise, it just looks amazing. There's just more tiger striping, there's more texture, definition, color on the surface of the crema. But taste-wise, I don't really think you want more crema because crema holds most of the bitter compounds in espresso and it makes it more unpalatable. So. Honestly, it's up to personal preference, but overall with a bottomless porter filter, the crema lasts longer and doesn't dissipate as fast. And because there's no spouts and less surface area for the carbon dioxide from the crema to actually stick onto and diffuse out of the coffee, you're left with a little bit more crema, which is actually a little bit more advantageous when you're trying to pour latte art because you have that nice thick flare to float your milk foam on top of. So I've been speaking of all the advantages and benefits of having one of these bottomless porter filters, but there are some disadvantages of having and using a bottomless porter filter. So I've talked about how you're able to see how your extraction is coming out, how well you've prepared your coffee beforehand, but because there's no bottom or spouts that would typically provide that internal overflow before the espresso comes out into the cup, any channeling will actually cause the espresso to squirt out from the bottom and it could go in any direction onto your machine onto your drip tray your table your clean white shirt your clean white shoes it's just really unpredictable even if you have your coffee bed preparation and your technique down to a t just be aware that sometimes it does happen and you don't want to wear white shirts or white shoes or white pants <laughs> Just make sure you don't have an all white outfit when you're dialing in new coffee. It's kind of ironic how it's easier to clean, but it also creates a bigger mess. Talking about making a mess, since the bottomless porter filter gives you more cup clearance, there's more distance in between the bottom of the basket and the bottom of the cup. So obviously if there's a greater distance, there's more potential for splashing. So you might get your cups dirty and some people don't mind it, but it might be a big thing for other people where they wanna have a nice presentable cup where they don't wanna constantly keep wiping the rims. So the last disadvantage I can think about for a bottomless porter filter is that you can't split a shot with it. It's not like you can have one cup for 15 seconds and then you immediately switch to a second cup for the last 15 seconds of the shot. It doesn't work that way. The flavors of espresso changes as it extracts over time. There's more sweeter notes in the first cup and the second one is going to be more bitter and you won't have the full picture. So the only way you can split two shots from a bottomless porter filter is that if you have a cup first and you mix the whole shot and then you pour it into two separate cups. So when I had my Breville Barista Pro, I didn't really consider getting a bottomless porter filter because the grinder wasn't really as consistent as I wanted it to be. I mean, the grinder was pretty good. It was my very first grinder and I thought the quality of the grinds were pretty good. But honestly, getting a better grinder that produces better grind consistency and pairing it with a bottomless porter filter will give you the best shots of your life. I was good with double spouted porter filters for Breville, but I just wanted to get one of these when I did upgrade, so it's really up to you. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Maybe you'll consider getting one of these bottomless porter filters, and if you do, let me know if your channeling gets so bad that it squirts all over your shirt. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you in the next video.